Jesus, we lift you higher. Is everybody ready? Hallelujah. We are going to do like this. As you're going to start from down, and we lift Jesus higher. Are we ready? Are we ready? That side, are we ready? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Listen to me. Jesus, we lift you higher. Oh, 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 oh,
singing it right from our hearts for you have been so good O King of Glory You tell me in your God that see I am going to break rivers in the desert And you have been a, a river in our desert lives When things are hard you have remained a God We bless you King of Glory We thank you and we pray that quench our family thirst You are the river that quench our university thirst You are the Lord and we bless you King of Glory Officially for us, O Lord God. We thank you for Reverend Demberia Yesu for the ministry well done, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. Uh, over there in hostels looking for one on one students, seeking for votes. May you do amazing above all God. Protect our students, O Jesus Christ, above all. The guildless parents also who are over there now by the holidays. And for us that we are here in the session. So, Thank you so much, Chaplain, for leading us in such wonderful prayer. And I want to praise the Lord. I want to thank God so much for today and that we have come back. And I want to see those who are here last night. Wave to me if you are here. Uh -huh. And let us be joined by those that came this morning. So wave to me. Wave to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And I want to welcome you all uh, in a different. Thank you so much. As, and we have our dear staff here. The whole administration is here. Oh, my God. And let's say to have you. We have our dear visitors. We have Uncle Sam Opolota and the family. They are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for us who attended the morning devotion, we were so much blessed. And we are still at the feet of the Lord to learn more uh, from. And we have our assistant secretary. Now, I, I want you to, to, to collect all the flowers. 
Please go and collect all the flowers. Aha, uh -huh. let us shower our dear assistant secretary with flowers. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And you're most welcome to Bishop Stewart University. And you know, we love you so much. And we always cherish you, uh, your relationship with us and your love towards us. Thank you so much. Our own Reverend Judy, her, our mother, our mentor, our sister. Oh my God, I can't say it all. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Our Dean of Students and Assistant, they're all here. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Dean Tuhubir Homazim, that you're here. Please, I welcome you. I cannot say everyone in name. And I welcome myself also. Muntero Mungaro. Yes, and uh, our dear chaplain is also in the house. Thank you so much for leading us in a prayer. And uh, you have always been good to us. And I want to take you through the program today. Tell someone about the programs that are going. Someone from our, ofi our official opening will be done by our DS, Tumtero Mungaro. He's already here. And then also Reverend Simon Dembele Ayesu will talk to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Today is Friday. So we shall have a staff workshop. Please, we are joining in the all staff, all preaching to us. And after that, we shall sure let you be free to, to go and, and, and serve the Lord in that capacity. And um, we are very much aware that we are in the days of read upon it uh, because of the programs of the university. There is no way we could let uh, we could separate that we are really moving on very, very much well. Some other students are out there looking for votes, you know, things of politics uh, and others helping others in campaigns. And But the Holy Spirit is leading us. And I still warn you, beloved of the Lord, don't lose your life in elections. Don't die. Don't hate your friends just because of, of elections. I don't have very much notices to make. Um, maybe, yeah, I don't have much uh, notices to make and we shall prepare our hearts and we listen to the word of the Lord. And tonight, uh, today, not tonight, as that Jomerich Gam, Ijambo Yaimana, Murinya Rwanda. My brother, you're much welcome. Come and read for us the word of the Lord. Natwa Natwa Zemurugo. Yes, we are going home. We are taking ourselves home in our local language. And they are too. So uh, one will read for us in um, or rumor in Rwanda. Now, some of you don't know this in Rwanda thing. You just sing songs, eh? Uh -huh. So we shall have Rufumbira, Nyarwanda, and Rinyankwere Richiga uh, translation. So. Yes, Ashimge. The church out to you, Musi. Tugiye kugisomerwa kuva mu gitabo cy'umuhanuzi Yeremia umutwe wa 31 aka uti Imana izasezerana isezerano nabantu bayo umurongo wa 23 ukunuko uwite kanyiri ngabo Imana ya Israeli ivuga iti bazongera kura kuramutsa iyo ndamutso ubwo nzakura ubwo nzagarura wabuturo burimo gukiranuka we wa wa musozi uruho kwera we kandi abibu yuda na umudugudu yaho yose bazahabana nuko nabaragiye imikumbi uko nahagije ubugingo uburambye nubugingo nubugingo 
nubugingo nubugi nubugingo buri bwagahinda nubugingo buri mu agahinda bwose narabukamaze mpera ko ndakanguka nsanga ibitosi byanje byanguye munzu ya Israel nuko nkuko nabahanzeho nuko nkuko nabahanzeho nuko nkuko nabahanzeho kugira ngo nsenye ndi ndi nuko nsenye ndandure ndimbure mbabaze nubaki yo yo minsi ntaza yo minsi hazabaho kuvuga bati ba data bariye imbuto bariye imizabibu ikarishe igicumo icaci umuntu wese uzarya imizabibu ikarishe amenyoge ni guwo gazarurirwa wa 31 uwiteka aravuga ati Dore iminsi izaza nzasezerana isezerano risha ninzu ya Yuda ninzu ya Israeli ritanduka ridakurikije rida isezerano nasezeranye nabasekuruza umutima yabo niho nzayandika kandi umutima yabo niho nzayandika nuko mutima yabo nuho nzayandika nuko nzababarira gukira kwabo kandi icaha cyabo sinzacibuka ukundi wa 34 wa 34 kandi ntibazigishanya ngo umuntu wese yigishe mugenzi we cyangwa uwo bava indimwe ngo menya uwiteka kuko bose bazamenya uhere uhereye ku wanyuma uhereye kurusha bandi ukomeye kurusha bandi nenju ya Israeli ne ya Yuda etarukushana ne inaragine na bishengurubo obona bakwata aha mukono kubiha umunsi ya Misiri haze jondagano yanje bakajita no bunabe nabire ndibabo no kwe mukama arukugera koreka eji niyo ndagano yindaragana nenju ya Israeli banyuma yeberebyo yabata mu eberajuro byanje bibahandike ahamutuma yabo kandi ndyabarahanga wabo nabo baba bantu banje mukama no kwa rukugera kandi umuntu aryabata cegesa mutahiwe anarumwinishe na mujarati manya mukama aha kuba bona baryamanya okuruga hamuto okushika aha mukuru abwo kuba ndyabasasara ibyo kushisha byabo neke bicabo ndindi kijuka bundi nokwe mukama arukugera oko nokwe mukama arukugera oha izoba kwakira abantu nyomushana akaragira okwezi nenyo nyozi kuba murikira nyechoro oretera inyanja kuyimuka nebingonzi byayo korera mukama owamahe nerkizi narye mukamwogo na jarati ebyo bintu kubyakorwa umubuteka bwabyo omisho ganje ubwo Orzaro rwa Israeli rukarekeraho kuba ihanga omisho ganje ebero byona okunukwe mukama arugamba na jarati okunukwe mukama arugamba na jarati iguru eri ahigukirya kubasa kugerwa nemsinji yensi okuzumu ekazorwa ubwo nkachwa orzaro rwa Israeli rwona ndutora ebi byarwo byona nokwe mukama arukujara kandi mukama ya jarati reba obunakunubwija 
ubwo road rembo rugaruka kuwombekerwa mukama ko rwamunarwa hanane okushya ahirembo rya kekubo kandi no mugoye ngo kugeresa kurya ye yongera omisho gugumize mu gushike ahacubungo gareb gukobe guze gowa no ruhanga rwona ortebwa mu emetumbi nijuri yakashenda nemsiriona kushika ahakajera kidoron kushika akekubo kahirembo ryembarasi erukureba urugo bwizoba rya yerezwa mukama no rwo rembo torwaho bundi no bwakuba okshenywa ebero byona icyo yakacite cyatshomerwa aho no cyagarcara Thank you, we can do better than that. Thank you, thank you. Tadashimini mana chane chane kuwindu mi zitandu kanye. We have different languages to praise the Lord. And we thank God for those languages. And this is a challenge to us. Last night I was telling that some of us, we don't even know any verse in the Bible. Now these people, they, have, they are reading from their head. Then when you're talking, you're saying, somewhere in the Bible there, it, <laughs> where you are, show me. And now this is a challenge that actually you can memorize the Bible. When we were in Gafcon, we were so, so much encouraged by a man who was memorizing the Bible and was speaking it as if he's telling stories. Yes. And, and, and uh, Simon Dembele, yes, Reverend, you are there. And the man was talking as if he's, he's talking stories. So uh, I really must, must say that this is a very, very good work. And we clap for them. We clap for them. Uh, these are not only two languages, but in the morning we had it in Uganda very fluently. Last night we had it in English and in Yankore Chiga. And we are still going on. Wait for Chinese. Yeah, hey, it is coming. And beloved of the Lord, when we are still here, we uh, were joined by our dear Vice Chancellor, Professor Gashomat Kunda. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for joining us and for loving us. He was with us last night and you're still sparing more time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also the University Finance Officer, CPM Zola Isaac. Thank you so much. Thank you for loving us and for joining us. Always, always, uh, we love you for that. And I will invite uh, the choir to give us a theme song as we prepare our hearts to listen to what the Lord is telling us and for the official opening of this mission. The choir, please, let's do it very, very much. First, we have a very amazing choir. Let's clap for them. They have done for us justice. They have done us justice, sincerely. Thank you so much. And people on the machines, you're very much wonderful. And we see people behind the cameras. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was telling that most of us, we have never seen ourselves on TV. And for the first time, we are live on TV. And we have a story to tell. The theme song. Let's enjoy that. <laughs>
in this century. Thank you so much, this choir, for uh, giving us that theme song. And I want to recognize the presence of media with us. Amid us, we have TV West is covering up all that we are doing. Now we can call our parents and we tell them that we shall be live on TV West. You can imagine that we have E AET, AET online TV, online TV, wake up to online TV. AET in online TV is with us here and is also um, recording all that we are doing and we are live uh, since it is online. We have Revival Radio with us. Revival Radio, oh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for loving us and you are part of us always. We have Radio Waste. Radio Waste, Radio Best. Aha, uh -huh, they are also here with us. Thank you so much for loving us. Also, we have Cruise FM, great friends and great music. Where are you? Thank you so, so much, Cruise FM, for also coming and joining us. Then we have Monitor Newspaper. Aha, uh -huh. 
Tuwete romu ngalo, omwa ni tatu waza kuzamu, evi yesu akwana nebitangaza. Mukama simwe, simwe mnonga for you, the media houses, and for loving us, and covering all that we are doing, and for loving Bishop Stewart in particular. And allow me invite Reverend Judy to come here. Let us give her clap, please clap for her. She's a mother, she's a sister, she is, and she will invite the one who will open our mission officially. Reverend Judy, thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Justina. After that commercial break, <laughs> they need to pay for all those adverts. Praise the Lord. Friends, a theme is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 verses 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. On that note, allow me welcome the diocesan registrar and secretary, Reverend Canon Edson Abasa, to do the official opening. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in humility, but with hearts full of gratitude for such an opportunity to come and be together in this mission. Sit at your feet listen to your word, sing songs of praise and worship as we exalt you and lift your name on high. Father, be glorified. This is your time. This is your place. And we are your people. I pray that you will take it all. Take it all and glorify yourself, O oh God. I also pray, Heavenly Father, that you use me in the time that we'll be sharing with your children, that your word will come forth straight and clear and interrupted, and your Holy Spirit will do your work in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. There is a song that says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and his mercies are new every morning. Can we quickly join in that worship song as we connect to the theme which says, behold, I will make a new covenant with you full of love and mercy the Lord is ready to restore his children and make a new covenant with them the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never will come to an end
much. Let us lift our hands and appreciate God for his faithfulness, his love, his mercy, his goodness. Praise the Lord. Edson Abasa is my name. Uh, I serve as a Dyson Secretary and call a diocese by God's grace. I got saved on the 7th of March 1997 in Senior One. At the age of 14, I bless the name of the Lord that found a sinner like me and made me who I am today. Hallelujah. I came with my wife, Dorcas, who happens to be staff of Bishop Stewart University. Please kindly stand for recognition. Thank you so much for accompanying me. Much as I know, even if I hadn't come, you would still be here because you are staff. Uh, I would like to bring love and greetings from my Lord, the Bishop, the Right Reverend Associate Professor Fred Sheldon Mwesgwa, who at the same time is the Chancellor of this university. He has sent his greetings and love and he's aware that I'm here representing him. Please receive his greetings. I would love to also uh, appreciate the management of Bishop Stewart University, the Chancellor and your management team, the chaplaincy, one, for extending uh, a humbling invitation to come and be in this main mission, but also to appreciate you for organizing such a mission. It is through such missions and conferences and conventions that we attended, that we were nurtured and brought up in the way of God, and today we serve him because of such missions that were arranged. Uh, many of us gave our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ through such organized missions, isn't it? Let me see by show of hands, those of you who could have received Jesus Christ in conferences, conventions, and missions, just, just put up your hand. I'm one of them. Is there any other? Yes. So you see, when you do the, this kind of thing, you are, you are saving very many souls. Let us appreciate management for allowing this mission uh, to take place. Uh... Uh, allow me, on behalf of the bishop, to welcome uh, my fellow team members who were specifically invited to, to speak to us, uh, the provincial the Provincial Missions and Outreach Director. They no longer call them coordinators, they are directors. <laughs> yes, uh, Reverend Simon Peter Dembelia Yesu, my brother with whom we served in the choir. We, we would be there, by the way, now. He would be in that team singing along with them because we, we ministered like you while at UCU some many years, not very many years, some few years ago at Uganda Christian University, and he was always my, 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 my he, was, he was always a praise and worship leader. He led songs. Me, I, I used to back up. I didn't do so much of leading. I, I could get the mic and sing tenor and back up him as he, he leads us. I still remember that very, very well. Thank you so much. And I know he's going to give us a test. Oh, if you didn't actually receive, get a test last night. But he's such a wonderful worshiper. Thank you so much for uh, coming to minister to us. Uh, my brother and your family, Mr. Sam Oplot. Yes, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome at Bishop Stewart University and to Ankole Diocese as well. Uh, all that said, I want us to reflect on our theme briefly, and then uh, I will be getting off stage as my brother comes in to share the word of God with us. 
our theme as extracted from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, uh, says the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. The days are coming. Now, there is something interesting about the people of Israel and the people of Judah because we, we know that these people of Israel are, 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 are God's special children, specially loved, specially selected, and, you know, they are God's children like a father and mother would, you know, bring forth children, and we, 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 always, called, we call, always call them biological children. This was like his nuclear family, God's nuclear family. And they were very, very, very special people. But we see God at the same time saying he is making a new covenant. What has happened to the old covenant? He's making a new covenant with them. To me, this suggests something has gone wrong with the old covenant, isn't it? Something has gone wrong with the old covenant. And so he's determined to make a new covenant with them. And the scriptures tell us that it is not going to be like the old covenant. When you read verse 32 of, of, of Jeremiah chapter 31. It is not going to be like the old covenant of laws, of sacrifices. You know the old covenant and what, the, what it entails. Is, this is going to be a different, a completely new covenant with special terms and conditions. This word covenant, you can, you, 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 I know my brother Demberi Aresu is, is, a, is a lawyer. So he understands the things of covenant. But for me, I want us to bring it to our own understanding. You can, you can, you can actually call it a memorandum of understanding. God had an understanding with the children of Israel. God had made an agreement. There, is, there are certain things they had agreed upon. And it seems these people are no longer respecting this agreement. They have dishonored it. And because they have dishonored it, God is willing again to make another covenant. Can you imagine? That's why I, I started by singing the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. He's always a God of a second chance. He can give you another chance even when things have gone wrong. Even when you are no longer in your rightful position as a child of God, he wants to bring you back into your rightful position. And God is saying, I am determined. I am ready to make a new covenant with God. The book of Jeremiah is dominated by doom and gloom, condemnation, destruction, and, and upon the people of Israel. When you read the entire book, most of the chapters, most of the text in that book is talking about condemnation and, you know, destruction. It's like God is not happy about the situation of his own people that he has loved and created. And so, because of that, he reaches a point of saying, yes, I know things have gone wrong, but I am ready to make a new covenant. Can we stand up and appreciate God that he always gives us another chance? Another chance. Kindly stand, please, and appreciate God that he always gives us another chance. This is a God who has authority, who is all-powerful, who can do anything. There's a time he, he destroyed the whole earth. Clap for him once more. Clap for him. Some of us wouldn't be standing here, by the way. Some of us wouldn't be living by now. But because of that special grace, love, mercy, he has given us another chance. You can sit. You can sit. Thank you so much. He has given us another chance to live. He has given us another chance to move in his grace. He has given us another chance and given us responsibilities. He has given us. He has loved us so much like he loved these children of Israel. I want to take you quickly to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And you see how God can sometimes can, can, can be angered by, by our sins. Someone read for me. 
because the, there is a lot of wind here. It can't allow me to do what I'm supposed to do. Someone get another microphone and read for me Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 8. And then we shall also read Jeremiah 17, verse 1. And you see the extent the extent of sin of these children of Israel, but how God can also be determined to punish sin. And then we shall be able to understand how much God has loved us. Please read. Genesis. 6, 5 to 8. Genesis, Genesis 6, 5 to 8. The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that that very intentional of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made a man on the earth. What and you to first pause? God saw the wickedness of man and that the intention of every heart was so evil and not only once but continually. And because it was so continuous, God regretted as to why he had created. You know that God can create, regret for creating you. You know God can regret for giving you an opportunity to come to Bishop Stewart University. You know God can regret for making you a member of staff of Bishop Stewart University. You know God can regret for putting you on earth. Because you are on earth and you are just occupying space like matter. There isn't anything good that comes out of you. You just occupy space and they see a figure moving. God can regret. Read on, please. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. It grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, He said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land man and animals and creeping things and the birds of the heavens. For I'm very sorry that I've made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. God regret, regretted for creating man and he was determined to blot out every man. But there was only one person who found favor before the Lord. And this was who? Noah. Praise the Lord. Can you be one among many? One among many. Who is going to be, who is going to find favor before the Lord? Hallelujah. Just one among multitudes that you will find favor before the Lord like no found favor before the Lord. Let us read Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1. 1, 2, 3. I think that, that will be sufficient. Jeremiah, I want to give you the context. The context into which God is speaking these words in our theme that I want to make a new covenant with you. Uh-huh, go ahead. Jeremiah 17, 1 and mm. 2. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with a point of diamond. That's the extent of It is of engraved sin. on the tablet of their heart. Their sin is even engraved. It cannot be wiped out. It is, you, you cannot erase it. You cannot delete it. You cannot do anything even in the modern technology. It is engraved. It is written with iron. That's the extent of sin to God's people. Uh -huh. go, go on. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron with a point of diamond and it is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of their altars. Mm. While their children remember their altars and their ashram beside evergreen tree on the high hills. Mm. On the mountains in the open country, your wreath and all your treasures I will give for spoil as the price of your high prices for sin throughout all your territory. Praise the Lord. The sin of Judah was too much and God was not happy with them. By the way, when you read at the beginning of Jeremiah, the assignment God gave Jeremiah relates to this. This sin that is being talked about, it is the instruction that is being given Jeremiah. Actually, he gave 
God gave Jeremiah a very tough assignment. You know, many of us only stop at, before I knew you, before, before, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I did what? I knew you. And I cleansed you. And I appointed you to be a prophet over nation. Do you know the assignment he was to going to accomplish? Let me read for you that assignment. The assignment is in verse 10. You, 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 you are not just chosen to be a prophet, to go and do nothing. There are serious things that you go and counteract and fight with. By the way, leaders, leaders at any level, when you are made a leader, people say you are going to eat things. Like professor here, when he was made acting vice chancellor, people think he's eating things. But he also knows what he's actually eating. Tough things. Fire. Uh -huh. Verse 10 says what? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. He's being appointed as a prophet to go and accomplish a certain task. But this task is a very serious task. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. See, I have said to you this day over nations and over kingdoms yes. to pluck up and to break down to destroy to and pluck to overthrow up. and to build wait, and to plant. Wait, wait, go slow, please, my sister. To pluck up. To pluck up. To break down. To break down. To uh, destroy. How? Uh, no no kujirachi. No kujirachi. No kujirachi. Uh -huh. Then the next one to destroy. To destroy is to do what? Uh -huh. Another and sign to me. overthrow. And to overthrow. Overthrow is what? Now imagine God is sending you among people to go and uproot, to go and break, to go and overthrow, to go and destroy. Will you get any reception, Vice Chancellor? If you are called to overthrow, to uproot. Perhaps things that have gone wrong in this university. You think you will receive any good reception? Nobody will welcome you. But uh, Jeremiah is being uh, called upon to do this kind of task and accomplish it. But when he has uprooted, when he has destroyed, when he has done everything that is negative, there is hope in the same verse. What is this hope? The last one. In that very verse. To pluck up, to break down, to destroy, and to overthrow, uh -huh. to build, and to After plant. you have overthrown, after you have chased immorality, after you have chased drunkenness, after you have chased away uh, homosexuality and lesbianism, after you have chased away betting, after you have dealt with every kind of sin, I am appointing you to build and to plant. Praise the Lord. This is the hope that we find in this theme when God is saying behold the days are coming I will make a new covenant he is rebuilding afresh praise the Lord he is planting afresh praise the Lord he is making things new the old is gone and behold the new has has come let us give God a very big hand clap that is the God of mercy and love but he can be a serious God who can also destroy who can overthrow who can pluck down, who can do anything that will. These Israelites we are talking about, by the way, they are in exile. He has already overthrown them out of their own land. They are in exile. Sometimes we do things and we think things will remain like that, but God can overthrow us. But he is also at the same time faithful. He extends the loving hand and he brings us back into our right relationship with him. Hallelujah. I don't want to go far. But when we are talking about this new covenant, there is something that comes in my mind. The scriptures tell us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that whoever is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old has gone and the new has, has come. But how does it come about? There is a transformation that takes place in your life. There is something that happens. He is saying the new covenant is not going to be like the old covenant of laws and, you know, the Ten Commandments, the, 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 the sacrifice of animals and, and the burning of, of fats and, you know, that kind. 
He is saying, I am making a new covenant, very much different from the old one. And this new covenant is intended to have the law of the Lord written on your heart instead of, you know, the stone tablets. This new covenant is going to be ushered into, is going to be ushered to us by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And the blood of Jesus Christ at the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ said it is finished. He said it is we are no longer going to suffer like the days of Noah. We are, not we are no longer going to suffer, you know, observing every law, but only, through by, on, only by the grace of God and through faith in Christ alone, we are going to be set free. Praise the Lord. And I, it makes me meditate, ponder upon the blood of Jesus. This blood of Jesus is so special that whoever believes this blood of Jesus is going to cleanse them and there will be new creations. And if, if you were a drunkard, they are no longer going to remember that you are actually a drunkard. God says, I will no longer remember their sins because they are all going to be wiped away. Praise the Lord. If you are a prostitute, you are no longer going to be referred to as a prostitute because you have been transformed and your new robe now is righteousness. Hallelujah. It's righteousness. Things have changed. Things have changed. God has lifted you. You, you. you perhaps are coming from a humble family and you are not sure that you even complete your studies. But the moment you are in Christ, God is going to make things change and everything is going to be new. Praise the Lord. It will be new. Things will change because there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is a hymn I like. Me, I'm a man of hymns. Yes, I also like contemporary, but hymns speak to me much more than any other uh, music. Now there is a hymn which says it is done that a great transaction is done. I'm still talking about the blood of Jesus, how special it is to know that you were bought back, you were restored, you were redeemed, and there is, there is something there is something that took place for your redemption. It didn't just easily happen. And today because we were bought back at a very expensive price and high price for you cannot pay anything when you are coming to receive that grace. You only need to bring yourself. Hallelujah. And so the song says, it's done. The great transaction is. I want to liken it to my brother, the professor. When you're signing a check, you know the rest first sign and then they finally bring to, to the accounting officer. The moment you put your signature as an accounting officer, it means that that transaction is done. Whether it has been 300 million, whether it has been a billion that you have put, appended your signature, the moment your signature is appended, the transaction is complete. Praise the Lord. So I was looking at Jesus, you know, putting his final signature on this check and he's going to be battered and cru crucified on that rugged cross. And he's like, yes, it is very painful, but for the sake of these people that I want them to have another chance, I will put my final signature. And Jesus I imagine he was closing his eyes and he's like, let me just put it for the sake of Rogers, of Annette, of Peter, of Paul, of me, of myself, of anybody who is seated here. And the transaction was done. Beloved, I want to inform you, the transaction was done. I don't know whether you, you comprehend and understand that. But I want to tell you, when Jesus was saying it is finished, it means that he put his final signature. And the transaction was done. And because it was done, you are free to come and receive that grace. However sinful you might be, 
he is ready to make a new covenant with you. I don't know whether how many covenants elsewhere that you have established, but he wants to break those various covenants that you have established with different, you know, evil spirits, whatever you might think, and bring you back and restore you into a new covenant that is lasting, a covenant that is out of the blood of Jesus. The song says, it is done. The great transaction is, I'm going to sing it for you. As you meditate on it, don't put in the keyboard. I want us to reflect on it. And when the transaction is done, this composer of this song says, I am my Lord's and he is mine. He led me and I followed on responding to the voice divine. And then the chorus says, Oh happy day, oh happy day. That he did what? When Jesus washed my sins away. It's done the great transactions done. I am my Lord and he is mine. He led me and I followed on. Responding to the voice divine. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. He teaches me to watch and pray. And live rejoice. Sing every day, oh happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. It's done, the great transaction is done, once more let us sing it. It's done, the great transaction is done, I am my Lord. And he is mine. He led me and I followed on, responding to the voice divine. Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! When Jesus washed my sins away. He teaches me to watch and pray and live rejoice, sing every day. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for that great transaction that was done for each one of us. The transaction that is equivalent to the blood, to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That at the cross it was finished. And today we respond to the voice divine for a new covenant that will last forever. We honor you. We bless your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, I have the honor to now officially, uh, on behalf of the Bishop of Ancola Diocese and the Chancellor of this university, to open this main convention in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Let me ask you to stand up on your feet and just give glory to God in your own words. Will you worship him? 
what a transaction that he has done for us. Let me ask you to just go ahead and, and speak words of worship. Will you just press for me a C as we think about how wonderful our goal is. Every one of you take a moment and think about your life and see how deep, how wide, how wonderful, how precious, how awesome God is. And if your hands are not heavy, will you lift them and just begin to worship? Just begin to worship God in his splendor. Worship him in your own words. The song says, I am alive to worship you. I'm created to worship you. Just say those words. I'm alive to worship you. Created me to worship you. Only those words. Lift up your hand and tell them, I'm alive. I'm to worship you. You created me, Jehovah. Created me to worship you. I'm alive to worship. I'm alive to worship you. You created me, Jehovah. Created me to worship you. I'm alive to worship you. I'm alive to worship you. If you mean it, will you do it with meaning? Created me to worship you. I'm alive to worship you. I'm alive to worship you. Father, I want to do it with all that I am. Created me to worship you. If you mean it, tell it. I'm alive alone. I'm alive to worship you. You created me, oh God. You created me to worship you. One more time. I'm alive to worship you. I'm alive to worship And I want to give you glory with all that I am. You created me. Oh, my to speak to you as a person as an individual ask the Lord to speak to you he is able to touch your life he is able to vindicate you he is able to rekindle certain things he is able to make all things in you come on open your mouth and worship him if you really have a mouth say words of worship and extol the Lord we give you glory King of glory we give you glory Jehovah Shammah we give you glory, Jehovah Shekinah. There is none like you, and there will never be one like you. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shema. You are Jehovah Shekinah. You are Jehovah Ra. 
you are El Shaddai, the uncreated one. At the mention of your name, every knee shall bow. At the mention of your name, every tongue shall confess. At the mention of your name, every possibility will bow. At the mention of your name, every disease shall bow. We extol you, King of glory. the Lord a hand clap. He deserves the glory. Come on, clap like you have those hands. And he is the Lord that gave you those hands. Come on, glorify him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you to take your seats briefly. Father, we give you glory and we thank you. Even as we sit, take over Jehovah Shekinah. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to give glory to God for yet another, another opportunity that God has bestowed on each one of us to sit at his feet and grow together. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate the leadership and the management of this great institution. I know and very much know that this is peculiar. It is not everywhere. Praise the Lord. To secure time and just get deeper in the Lord. Allow me to appreciate uh, the chaplaincy. Thank you so much. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we give glory to God for you. I want to also appreciate uh, my papa, the canon Abasa. Now, this guy, uh, every time I have an opportunity to talk about him, I do because I boast in, in you know, having met him in life. Every time he hands over to me, now even to deeper, <laughs> praise the Lord. He handed over to me a ministry of, of, of the choir when he was leaving. I was one of those that tried to run away from ministry. But that guy pulled me and pulled me. And today, when I saw him uh, uh, preaching to us, I was like, okay, now I understand. God bless you so much. God bless you so much, Papa Abasa. I saw a worshiper after God's own heart. Every chapel choir member, we call them worshippers after God's own heart. Faith, I am happy to see you over there. Praise the Lord. I thought I would find you leading worship here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am Simon Peter Dembedia Yesu, and by the grace of God, the director of mission and outreach in the church of Uganda, and I bring greetings to you from the secretariat. The archbishop is on leave in the U.S. I think he's coming back on Tuesday night. But I bring, bring greetings specifically from the provincial secretary who is very much aware that we are here. Praise the Lord. I am a married man to Ewan Caroline Dembe Yayesu. Her other name is Musi Menta. So you know I am a moko of this land. <laughs> And the Lord has blessed us with children, Jeremiah, Jemima, and Jerusalem. So we give glory to God uh, for that. He is a good God. Hallelujah. And uh, by the grace of God, I want to ask us to bow down our heads and we pray. Lord, take over every life. Take over every heart. Take over every soul. For it is you that worketh in us both to will and to do for your own pleasure. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the theme, the topic that is before me is under new covenant for generations. Under the new covenant for generations. And this was gotten from Jeremiah chapter 31. I must say it has been perfectly and graciously filled with the spirit of the Lord uh, given foundation by Canon uh, Abasa. And I am very glad to have followed you, Papa, after this. I want to take a moment and just elucidate, uh, substantiate covenants 
and and uh, and, and and contracts i have i have my background is law and when i looked ab- at this i really felt it very important for me to differentiate the two because many of our many of us have gotten into covenants thinking we are contracting and many of us are held back in some kind of life we want the lord to take over but we are under some bondages the lord in his grace got me from the streets of kampala as a beggar i begged for some time not because i wanted but because of life and while on the streets of kampala i involved myself in a number of things and if i have the time i would have said all that but i think i will do that tomorrow in the in the evening at seven so I understand what it means to covenant and what it means to contract. For a contract, it is a binding agreement between two people of a number of elements and ingredients they are in. For example, one who is sober, of age, sane, able to do what they are, they are doing, they are understanding, and it can be begun by anyone. But for a covenant, a covenant is between a supernatural and a natural in other words covenants are beyond the normal covenants are beyond the usual are we together contracts may not be binding on some people for example if i began a con- if i have a contract between me and reverend imi his children may not be affected or part of it depends on the ingredients and the terms they are in But I want to say to us before I get any further that covenants are binding even on those that were not part. Praise the Lord. Covenants are binding even on the descendants. Some of the things you want to do now as we get deeper into this, think about the people that will come after you. Think about your brothers, think about your sisters, think about your children as you covenant in any way. Praise the Lord. The other thing that I want to say to us that contracts are negotiable, but covenants are not negotiable. <laughs> Hello. With contracts, you can say, I don't want that term. I don't want that term. I don't want that to be. But with covenants, if it gets you there, you don't negotiate. You are taken just as you are. Hallelujah. With contracts, one person can, can breach and, and they are unfaithful and, and the other party just gives up. But with covenants, wherever there is a breach, the other party keeps on expecting from you. Even if you go away from it, they keep expecting from you. And I'll give uh, a few examples therein. And lastly, covenants are initiated by the supernatural. Contracts can be begun anywhere, but covenants... It is the supernatural that begins. So it is so sad to note, children of God, that some people are now under covenants with the devil. Before we talk about the new covenant, but I want, you to, I want to bring to your attention that from the four things, we would have said much, but from the four things we have talked about, it is very true that some of us are under covenants with the supernatural And that supernatural is the enemy. Getting yourself into witchcraft, you are covenanting. Because you need fame and money. I told you, they are initiated by the supernatural, but they are also binding on the descendants. Today I am praying for one of the great, not great, somehow most known musicians in Uganda here. I won't mention his name because some of you are fans. He got himself into a covenant to be famous and to make money which he actually has. He has the name. If you talk about him, every young man knows him and even the old ones know him. But he got himself into a covenant with some which doctor in Nansana 
to be famous. Actually, up to today, when he sings, his songs are not, they are actually fake. But man, he is known everywhere. He is nominated everywhere. You find himself, you find his name nominated <laughs> on awards of, with the people that have millions of followers. And for him, he has one what? One million followers. And that is the power of covenanting. Now, the reason as why he's seeking for, for prayer and deliverance is they are demanding for his mother. So whatever he began and the many he has sacrificed, the supernatural, <laughs> he's tired of little, little blood. Now the supernatural demands the bigger what? Bigger blood. If you want me to proceed and if you want your life, I need your mother sacrificed. And that is the reason he, he looked out for prayers. As you live your life, as you, you know, study, as you grow up, be mindful of covenanting before we get to God and what he has done for us. Because we shall conclude with prayer. But I wanted to begin by telling us the difference between these two and how big and how serious covenants are. Talk about some of you have covenanted into sexual things. I mean, you live your life slaves to some sexuality, immorality. Sometimes you do it thinking that you are actually enjoying, but the devil is up to something and he is eating you up like chips and chicken. Even this morning, I was praying for a young lady who got herself into lesbianism. And she began jokingly by watching pornography. I told you the supernatural is the one that initiates with the covenants. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is the supernatural that does what? So it be she began jokingly watching some pornography. I said, I think I love this. I think I like this. As we talk right now, she wants to come out and she can't. But we thank God for the man Jesus Christ. Because you can surely be redeemed if you come to your senses. Hallelujah. And now these guys of LGBT are rising so deeply and wonderfully. And some of you are so much in love with the legal tender that they put before you. And you're becoming agents, covenanting with them every day and every morning. But I want you to know, it, is, it doesn't just end like that. I have worked as a university warden of Uganda Christian University. And I have met a number of such young men and young women struggling with the covenants they began with LGBT and other sexual atta sexually attached issues. So I don't know where you put yourself, but I want to bring good news. I want to bring good news that with the Lord God Almighty, he always desires to see you walking with him. Growing the, the, the way he created you to be. He wants you to be the man he created you to be. He wants you to be the woman he created you to be. He wants you to be the doctor, the manager, the lawyer, the engineer, whatever it is that he created you to be. And that is why he always puts a chance. He puts an opportunity for every one of us to rekindle our thinking, to get back to him so that he can redeem us from the works of the enemy. And this afternoon, children of God, I want to lead journey with me as we talk about this covenanting God. Throughout scripture, we realize that he always desired to have a meeting of minds with the people he is working, he is moving with. When he met, when he created Adam, of course, there was a covenant between him and Adam. There was a few ingredients that he put this is what you should do and this is what you should not do. And of course, all of us know that Adam breached what God had put before him. And of course, there were, there were repercussions. If Adam 
only said, I am sorry, Lord, we would not be here now. <laughs> if Adam only said, I repent, we would not be struggling for rent and shouting around looking for votes. If Adam was able to say sorry. But he breached that. And then we see God taking up Noah and, 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 and Canon really read it for us so nicely. He says, my spirit shall not strive with man anymore. God was tired and gotten disgusted by the way man whom he created in his own image and likeness. But because of Genesis chapter 3, man lost like the likeness of God and only kept the image of God. And God is now tired of how man lives. And God now invites. And I love this part. I, and I saw <laughs> Reverend Edith bringing it out so much. But Noah. God favored who? Noah. And now God covenants with Noah. But of course you know what happened. Noah got himself drunk and his very daughter slept with him. And God was not happy. And we see how God gets to Abraham. And you saw how Abraham also lost it. And throughout and throughout I would have talked about these covenants until we stop, we can have the entire week talking about this covenant. But let me jump up to the, the, the covenant that God has with Moses, the Mosaic covenant. And God puts up different, different regulations, different laws that whoever is able to follow them, they will see him at the end of it all. But still, man could not hold on to what God was putting before him. Do not do this. Do not do that. If you want this, do this. If you want that, do that. And God was surely looking for a man and a woman that would be able to listen and understand and follow. And it couldn't work out. Sacrifices after sacrifices. And the priests themselves did whatever they could. But men would not understand. They would forget these things. And now we come. We come to this particular one. He says in, 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 in Jeremiah. For me, I, 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 I went straight to where it is fulfilled. I went straight where it is fulfilled in Hebrews chapter, chapter 8. Okay? It is the same thing. But the fulfillment is in the New Testament. I, 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 Jeremiah was prophesying, I will do these things. Okay? But we see them fulfilled in the New Testament. But somehow, Hebrews, this letter to the Hebrews brings, out, brings it out very perfectly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter what? Let's begin, chapter 8. Let's begin from verse, let's begin from verse 4. Now, if we were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things. The priests of the time that lived in the days of, of Moses and thereafter, they were simply representing a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things. And now we have something that is peculiar and real. For when Moses was about to erect a tent, he was instructed by God saying, see that you make everything according to the patterns that was shown, shown to you on the mountain. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant of Medias is better. Since it enhanced, it is, it is enacted on better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. I love the way uh, Canon put it. If he says, behold, I am doing a new covenant, that's, that insinuates that actually there was a problem with the old one. We could not walk under these laws so clearly. People would be writing these laws on their doorposts, 
They would be putting them in the, in their rooms. They would be putting them on the walls. But still they went against them. They still went against them. And then in verse 8 he says, For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers. On the day when I look, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, for they did not continue in my covenant, and so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. That they did not continue as God expected them. They didn't walk the way God called them to walk. They didn't do the things that God expected them to do. They didn't accomplish the bargain. They are part of the bargain. They wouldn't do it because they were weak. And he says, behold... I'm going to do a new covenant. For this is the covenant that I will make with them, with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach each, and they shall not teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, No, the Lord, for they shall all know me. Ah. They shall all know me from the least to the greatest. I will be merciful towards their iniquities, and I'll remember their sins no more. Let me ask you to lift up one of your hands and make a prayer with me before we get into this one. Father, we thank you. Come, come on, repeat after me. Father, we thank you for your love that you gave us an opportunity to partake of your goodness, of the joy that comes from you, the redemption that comes from you, the revival that comes from you. Touch us, O God. Now make it personal. Say, touch me, O God. Speak to me, O God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the, 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 the writer to the Hebrews is telling us a few things that I want to say to us, and then I will pray and shut up. Number one, this new covenant is sealed by the blood of Jesus. Listen to me, children of God. This new covenant is sealed by the blood of the man, Jesus Christ. The priests in the Old Testament did whatever it could. They could, but they failed to take the people to a place where God desired them to go. The blood of goats, the blood of sheep, the blood of, of, of birds, the blood of, of whatever you can talk about could not redeem any humanity. I know some of you are deceived by some witch doctors today to take animals, to take birds, so that you may be redeemed. That all was nullified. This new covenant is sealed by the man Jesus Christ. And not just that, but the shedding of his blood on the cross. If Jesus came and performed miracles and went back to heaven, Christianity would be null and void. If he came and walked on water, and, and raised the dead and then healed, raised the dead and then, you know, the blind saw and then he just went back to heaven. Mm -mm. Christianity would be nothing. But this is what makes this so peculiar. That when he came, he suffered. Hallelujah. And I love it. We mention it almost every Sunday when we are mentioning the Apostles' Creed. That he suffered and died. And that makes him so far by far different from any other, any other person you can talk about. Any other icon, any other religious icon you can talk about. This guy suffered. The Bible says he died. Hallelujah. And he descended where? To the dead. 
Now talk about any other that you can imagine. Buddha. Buddha died and he was burnt. Krishna. Krishna died and was buried. And actually, for them to remember her in Uganda, I see a lot of matchboxes with Krishna. Some of you actually have these matchboxes. Maybe you worship. You do not know that you are covenanting. Hello? The Bible says he descended where? To the asked why he descended. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3 that he descended to the dead to preach to those that lived in the days of Noah. How I love that. To preach to those that lived in the days of Noah that they may know. Hello? So it is so bad for those that don't understand this new covenant. The Bible says that on the third day he did what? He rose again. Now talk about any other you can imagine. Muhammad was buried somewhere. And people go there, I call it a holy journey. To go and see a person who is dead. Think about those icons. Jesus, from whom we partake of this new covenant, did not just die. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. And he seated at the right hand of the father. Listen to this. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Now that makes him very, very peculiar from any other. Peculiar. Far different from those that have lifted his mother other than him. And making blasphemous statements that mother of God. Can you imagine? You know God lived before Mary and then you say Mary gave birth to him. Is that okay? Let me not get there. But I just want to say to you children of God that this is sealed by the blood of who? Of Jesus Christ who is going to come again to judge the living and the dead. I want to ask a question. Where will you be? And what will happen to you? Where are you? Which covenant are you making? With which people are you making these covenants? How far have you gone? How deep have you gone? I want to introduce to you. There is a covenant in the man Jesus Christ. Um, the, 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 the DS brought it out so clearly. That he said it is sealed. When he says it is what? Finished. You don't need goats anymore. You don't need to go and, and, and sacrifice chicken anymore. <laughs> I was so much into music. While on the streets of Kampala, one of the things I did so much was singing. After some time, I got used and because God had given me the gift and Satan was stealing it. Like some of you here, you're given gifts, but you're using them to glorify the devil. I used this voice to sing all nasty songs. All dirty songs you can imagine. Bar after bar, club after club. But I want to say something to you. Some of these songs, we used to sacrifice for them. We used to make sure there is blood so that people like the music. So that people... Fully. Some of these musicians come and some of you want to touch them. They have nothing. He's putting on a trouser that is full of holes, but everyone is chasing him. Hey, hey, hey. Everyone wants to hug him. There is, a, there is something behind that. It is not just happening. Hello? Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. I don't know how deep you have gone into these things. But I want to say to you, by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the shedding of his blood, you can be redeemed. You can be vindicated. You can be rejuvenated. There can be a revival in your life. There can be a revival in your, in, in, in your, in your studies. There can be a revival in your marriage. There can be a revival in your family if you partake of what Jesus Christ has for you. Hallelujah. How I wish I had time to take you deeper into this, these sacrifices. Where people, I know, I, I very much know. Every time we did, our, our purpose was to make sure we arrest a number of souls. 
So for you, you dance, jumping, you just don't know that we want your soul. So that the music can go. And it is very true. These people <laughs> do nasty things to make sure that your soul is captured. How I wish I had informed Erica Aria to come here and speak these things. As you dance to these tunes, <laughs> it is not just the tunes. <laughs> it is deeper. They want you to covenant with them. So they put in a song and you, hey! Aomia, aomia. you just don't know that the kuomia is bigger than the kuomia. That is just music. Talk about movies. Talk about what? Whatever you can think about. So I don't know how deep Satan has taken you, but I want to say to you, we have a second chance. Jesus died for us. And he wants us to be redeemed. The second element of this new covenant is that light has come to us. We are no longer slaves to darkness. We are no longer slaves to darkness. We have light. And if you love light, you will see things rightly. Through this man, Jesus Christ, through this covenant, we partake of the light that is beyond what men and women can comprehend. And the devil is the king of darkness. He desires that you continue desiring the things of the dark. The things that take you to destruction. That you may covenant with nakedness, nudeness, pornography. And I know some of you on your phones, when you switch off your phone, when you switch off the light in your room, you switch on your phone and automatically you go on pornography. Because the king of darkness takes over. Hello? Hello? If you walk in the darkness, you will covenant so deeply with the devil, even without your knowledge. Because you will not be seeing. Let me ask three guys. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me ask three guys to come. Especially the guys that were on the, on the instruments. You come. Bass jitter, uh, solo jitter, and the piano. You come. I know ladies have scarves. Give us a scarf. I know you have a scarf there. How did you forget one? Eh? Give us a scarf. Just one. Ladies. Who was on the piano? Is, who, you come, the one on the drums. <laughs> Hallelujah. Clap for them. If you love the darkness, you will not enjoy the benefits of this new covenant. Hey, we want one. Okay. Since we want one. This is how I just want to do a practicum very fast. You tie yourself properly. Hey, make sure you do not see us. Make sure you are in the dark. Are you in the dark? Are you sure you're in the dark? Okay, you come. One of you stand here and I want another one the other side. Now, one of these people is going to do something and think about it and do it. In fact, let's just dance. Let's dance. You're, this one is the one giving us the dance on your left, on your right. This one is the one, now even you, you're going to copy that dance. Okay? Now, for you, you are in the light. For you, you are in the light. You will be seeing what he's doing. You, you are in the darkness, but we expect you to do it. Yeah. But you're going to dance that dance that this one on your right has danced. Now that is what happens when you are in the darkness. You will think you're doing the right thing. And yet you are doing the, the wrong thing. Many of the people that have gone into the darkness are covenanting day and night. But to them, they think it is okay. Give us a dance. Hey, no, no, no. For you, you're going to dance what he has danced. Uh huh. Uh huh. You see? These guys, look at this. <laughs> the guy is not in the dark. <laughs> now, dance seriously without making noise. I know now he's using this sense. 
Okay, give us a dance. Okay, give us the dance you is in the dark. Hey, that they are doing. That is what they are doing. Okay, stop. Give us another one. Give us another dance. You give us another dance. They are doing it. Do it also. Clap for them. Clap for them. Clap for them. You see, when you are in the dark, you cannot do the right thing. And many a times the devil has kept many of us blindfolded. And we think we are on the right track. Number three, this new covenant is by the grace. It operates on the grace. Praise the Lord. It is undeserved favor. God does not look at how far you have gone. He can redeem you. He can rejuvenate you. He can revive you. He can reinstate you. I know of the wrong teachings that are run, running in Kampala. I don't know whether it has reached BSU. The thing called the Fanero. Where people are told about the grace of God as available and, and continue to do what you want. The grace is available. But this new covenant is by the grace. God gets you from wherever he gets you. He gives you beautiful ashes. But you have an agenda to live rightly. You have a mandate to walk rightly. Not living anyhow and you say the grace is what? It's sufficient. Mm -mm. The grace of God leads us to, to purity. The grace of God brings us to order. The grace of God brings us to a place of rectification. Doing things rightly. If you talk about the grace that takes you to rebellion. The grace that takes you to, to disobedience. That is not the grace of God. It is some grace from somewhere. So I don't know where you are. And what you have done. But what I want you to know. That we have a new covenant. In the man Jesus. And is giving each one of us. A chance to be revived. Praise the Lord. Number three. Or number four. That this, this new covenant brings an inward transformation. It is an inward. He says, I will write them where? On their hearts. These laws will no longer be on their, on their doorposts. Or at their entrances. Or in their rooms. But these laws, these new laws, will be written where? On their hearts. In their minds. In other words... It calls for a personal transformation. A personal transformation. Think about your life. Think how you live it. And if you are not walking according to the will of God, there is a problem. Inward transformation. You know that you know that jealousness is leading you to destruction. Unforgiveness is leading you to destruction. Bitterness, rage, anger, competition. The devil desires that you live a life of competition. Someone plates their hair and then you say, how? How come? I will also plate the same. Someone buys their new dress and somehow you begin competing in your mind. E I'm going to get the same. Bitterness. But God is calling us that the transformation should begin from the inside. That is why it is wrong for you to say to us, it is God who sees my heart. Your transformation must begin from inside so that we are able to testify, to give the evidence of it on the outside. Praise the Lord. You know that you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You don't need to write it anywhere. You know that you ought to walk in forgiveness. You let go of the things that have hurt you. 
You know that you have to fellowship. You have to pray. Read your Bible. To pray every day. These are things that must be embedded on your heart and in your mind. You don't need someone to remind you to give your offering. That is the power of the new covenant. If you find yourself in a place where they have to remind you, give your offertory. Just know you're struggling. You have not gotten in a relationship of this guy. Praise the Lord. This new covenant calls for a personal relationship with God. Personal relationship. The salvation of your mother is not your salvation. The salvation of your father is not your salvation. The relationship of your pastor with God is not your relationship. Paul writes to them in Philippians chapter 2 and verse what? Verse 12. That is as it was in my presence. Now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with what? With fear and what? Trembling. In other words, it must be yours. It must be yours. He says, he has said in, 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 in chapter 8, I think that was verse what? He says, I will be their God and they shall be my what? My people. And they shall not teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me. And that is the power of the supernatural. He expects you to have, to know him as an individual. He expects you to have that personal relationship. But you know that the devil is moving around like a rolling what? Lion! And some of you as I talk right now, you have a personal relationship with the devil. He has covenanted with you deeply and deeply and your kind of Christianity is only dependent on your baptism card. You tell people I am a Christian simply because you have a baptism card under your pillow. And then you go ahead and do things that are nasty, things that are weird, simply because you, you have a Bible. You say, you people, I am a Christian, don't joke with me. Uh, you see? Uh, 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 uh. Does this really show that you are a Christian? Some of us, our Christianity is dependent on songs. You don't have a relationship with God, but you have a relationship with Tunaku Wachife. They put it in and you even bring out all the teeth. <laughs> but a lot of things are happening in your life. You don't accomplish the things that God has put before you. You live a life of drunkenness. You live a life of rumor mongering. You live a life of nudiness. You live a life of, of dividing people of God. Fighting day and night. Drug addiction. Fornication. Adultery idolatry. These are things that are really eating you up. But when they ask you, are you a Christian? Of course, my name is Rachel. Can, who, who, else, who else can get the name Rachel if they are not Christian? <laughs> Hello? Christianity is not about your name. It is not about where you are born, your father or what. Christianity is about Christ. So this new covenant is specifically and clearly looking for your personal relation. He says they shall know me. All of them shall. No one will be able to be. They shall have to know me. And I want to say to you friends, there is no any other opportunity. The scripture says he is the last Adam. We don't expect any other Christ. We do not. Unless we partake of this, unless we partake of this, we lose it. So I do not know about you, child of God. I don't know whether you have covenanted with other things, but I want to invite you to this new covenant in the man Jesus that will bring you freedom beyond what people can say. To some of us, we have covenanted in true fornication. And I told you it is the supernatural that introduces it. As God is trying to come to you in this mission week. As God is trying to open a door for you for another chance. As God is working out for you to be redeemed and rekindled. I know that I know the devil has introduced many things to you. 
To some of you, he has come through dreams. And as we talk right now, you are married to some guy that you do not know that comes to your bed every night. And you must denounce him. To some of you, you are married now to pornography. Your phone is the source of everything that is taking you to destruction. To some of you, it is your parents that introduced you to some things. Um, I was praying for a young man who said to me, it was, it was now his third year of not graduating. And he said to me, I got into drunkenness. And this thing is eating me. All my friends have graduated. They have gone. But for me, even after one paper, I go to drink. I don't do the second paper and the third paper. Now I get to my senses on the fifth paper. And that is why I have not graduated. I was in class teaching and I saw a cheat moving around and I got scared. I said, eh, this is university student. And behold, the cheat reached me. And when I opened the cheat, it was saying, if you can help me, I'm told you can help me. If you can help me, help me. People are graduating. I am not graduating. I am married to alcohol. I began joking, but now I take half a crate and I lose my entire faculties. I can't reason. I can't differentiate between black and white. I come to class when I'm drunk, but he began jokingly. Some of you began these things of relationship when you're not ready. As we talk right now, instead of thinking about your excellency, you're thinking about Peter, Jacob, Joshua, Miriam, Adikini. You're thinking about Tukamushaba. And somehow you are deeper and the devil is happy. I told you with covenant. You don't have any say. You don't have to come out anyhow. You need the grace. You need the grace. I don't know where you have been taken. But we have a covenant. And he says a new covenant. Where my laws will be written. In their minds and on their word. That is what God expects. He knows that you need to graduate. But are you, get, are you walking in this new covenant? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Or you have a relationship with money? You can do anything to get the money. And the Illuminatis have put in a lot of money. They're just like the, 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 the homosexuals. A lot of money. To cause you to think that if you have the money, you have it all. Who told you you need money to go to heaven? I don't know which covenant you are in. But today, this entire, these days that we have, God is looking out for you. He is looking out for you. That Satan will not eat you alive. Because the devil wants to eat you alive. The devil has no time for those that are already his. <laughs> but you who has the time to come and look out for God, the devil wants you down. There are those he knows that are his. You talk about this mission, come to fellowship and it doesn't really sound anything. But you, who still has a glimpse of light on the inside of you, come out of the darkness and partake of Jesus. He's able to do exceedingly. Me, I was so much lost. So much lost into boxing. So much lost into pickpocketing. So much lost into drunkenness. And every time I thought about coming out, it sounded so impossible. The devil has five lies to keep you covenanting with him. Five lies to keep you covenanting. Every time he tells you, number one, you are not the first one. So you continue doing some things thinking that even your brother is doing them. But in actual sense, you are the one. It is only you who is masturbating. Your brother is not. The devil should not tell you that you are, that you are, you are not alone. 
Second lie the devil tells you, you will overcome this. You're going to outgrow it. So you continue going to the witch doctors, bewitching people, and the devil tells you, you will, you're going to outgrow it. So up to today, there are people that these reverends counsel and pray for. They are married for 10, 15 years, 30 years, but they're still struggling with the things they got into in senior one. So the devil should not lie to you. It is only by Jesus Christ that you can overcome. You have no power to overcome that thing. Lie number three, the devil tells you you're going to be ashamed. So you continue getting deeper into Illuminatism, into lesbianism, into homosexuality. And the devil is telling you, ha, if they know, or wait they. So you even go ahead and recruit more and more and more. I mean, you take it deeper so that your death is not just a simple death. <laughs> Remember, his agenda is to steal, kill, and do what? Destroy. Lie number four. The devil tells you, you're going to die. If you stop, many of the young people today are drinking. And actually, they even, they even fear coming to these places because they know they're going to speak to them. The devil tells them, the day you stop it, you're going to die. So the person continues taking cocaine, marijuana, blah, blah, cigarettes. They're covenanting. They're getting deeper. They are dying, but the devil is telling them the day you stop. Have you found a man smoking and he tells you, if I don't smoke, I am gone. That is the devil working. Lie number five, and which has kept many people covenanting with the devil, is he tells you, and you enjoy it. And when you add up things, it's as if you are enjoying. <laughs> Have you met someone praising alcohol? And they are telling you, you, it is you who doesn't know. This thing is sweet. Have you met someone praising sex? Ah, you are joking. What am I mean to be warm? So before you know it, you think you are enjoying, and yet you are. How deep have you gone with this covenant? The other week I was praying. So we began praying. And the demons began manifesting. And the demon asked, a, asked us a question. Were you there when she was taking my yogurt? Were you there when she was taking my what? <laughs> and I pity you young girls who love to be taken out. You're going to covenant in yogurts. You're going to covenant in yogurt. So we thank God she was delivered. But it was something that she got from some guy who was into some worship of the devil but wanted her soul. It was her soul that now was deep in hell. It is the soul that we had to call out. We called her, Rita, come out. Rita, come out for six hours. In the name of Jesus, come out. Then after some time, <sighs> and she didn't know she was like that for three days. I don't know where you are. I don't know how you have covenanted. I don't know whether sex is one of the things that the devil is telling you, eat as much as you want. As long as you hear the song, oh, 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 oh. for you, you continue, oh, 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 oh. let me conclude with this illustration. I want to tell you something about sex. Sex is spiritual. But the devil steals it and makes many of you covenant with the demons. Now those that didn't come for this will not be able to listen to this. But I want you to know that the devil has always told the people that sex is about the body. It is only the female organ and the male organ that meet. Let me tell you, this is what the Bible says the two shall become one flesh. And God created man in three persons, body, soul, and 
spirit. Whenever you have sex with anyone, it is not only your body that meets. Your spirit and your soul meet. Hello? That is why many people who have engaged themselves into sex before marriage. You see, in marriage, it is a different story. God blesses. This is what the Bible says, that it is good for man. If it, yeah? What does the Bible say? The, the, what does the Bible say? Uh -uh. That he who finds a wife finds a good thing and does what? Obtains favor. Now, you see how God now changes the entire story. Now, you who goes for Rachel simply because Rachel has a cabina, let me tell you, Rachel may have been born with a demon that you don't know. I don't, I don't know whether there is a Rachel here, but I'm not talking about you. Let me, let me use the names that I don't expect to be here. You who goes for Namakura. Ah, now I am sure Namakura is not here. You who goes for Adikini. Because Adikin has good breasts. Listen to me. Some people are born with demons on them. Sexually transmitted demons. That thing is very true. Some of you are very wise. You would understand these course units and the courses. But the day you slept with Richard. Somehow this thing just took away your, your understanding. And many husbands, if your husband that you're here and a married man and a married woman, many of the ways that Satan has used to put down marriages is adultery. You go out and sleep with a woman because she's in the bar, but that woman has a demon on, of poverty on them. You get back home and you make money. Money is nowhere to be seen. You forget that you became with one, in one flesh with that woman. Some of you are born very fine. <laughs> but you go to bed with a, with a man that has sickle cells. And you think it is okay. Before you know it, it comes. So many people have covenanted through sex. Simply because they think it is sweet. Now before you know it, they are no longer in their senses. They can't do anything for themselves. I see many families crumbling. I see many young people losing it. The young girl was so sober. She was so much in class. She was doing all her things well. But the day she loved Segirinya. She cannot do things anymore. I want to come to one end. Let me ask you to stand up on your feet. I don't know whether you have had sex with many people. Now I don't know how many demons you have on you. But we have this new covenant. And God wants us to understand these things from our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just get a key that you find good for yourself. Praise the Lord. I want to ask you to close your eyes and think about yourself. Think about yourself. And if the devil has played on your mind, swindled your spirit, some of you are so deep into this world music, you don't know why they are called world music. And you hate the gospel. I wish I had to pull out some people here. But for the sake of your identity and dignity, I won't. Just lift up those hands and begin to pray to God for yourself. I don't know how far you have gone. I don't know how deep you have gone. I don't know. But what I know is that if you partake of the man Jesus, you have opened a door that the devil cannot touch. If you're here and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me ask you to come out of that congregation.
and you come here and we ashamed the devil. Make a statement to the devil. I am no longer yours. I am for God. If you're in there and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come and I pray for you. Come and I pray for you. I don't care which covenant you have made. Put a stop on it by accepting the power of the new covenant. Who is the man Jesus? Let me ask you to come and believe in the man Jesus. When he calls me, I will answer. Oh, when he calls, Jesus is calling. Me. When he calls me, Answer, I will be so walking when he calls me. When he calls me, when Jesus calls you, never hesitate. He calls you. Hallelujah. sure that all of us here gave our lives to Jesus. I want to ask this group you gave your life to Jesus but somehow you left your path and went through the wrong path and you want to reaffirm your faith, recommit your life to Jesus. You want to say Lord I was serious, I now overcome this. Let me ask you to walk here and we shall pray. If you want to recommit your life to Jesus Christ, come, you have an opportunity. He is a God of the second chance. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Come on. No turning back. I have decided. I want to follow you, Jesus. I am not turning back. I am so serious. I have decided to follow you, Jesus. I am not turning back. I have decided. Follow you, follow you. Come on, do not allow the devil to whisper to you those lies. I have decided. I mean it, oh God. I am not turning back. Not turning back. I have. Before me, I am not turning back. Oh, the cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. I need you, my 
of Jesus. No turning back. Hey, no time. The cross before me, I know. The world You're still there. I have given you 30 seconds. Don't take these moments for granted. If you're still there, I'm giving you 30 seconds. 15 are gone. ask you to put your hands in your chest you who have come what you're doing today is something that will benefit your entire generation God is looking for you now say heavenly father I recommit my life to you I denounce every work of darkness that was enticing my own that was entangling me today I denounce the devil I am for Jesus and I will forever be for Jesus I believe the way the truth and the life that's my portion amen Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The chaplains wants to meet you. I want to pray for this last category. You can go to the chaplains. Listen, I want to talk to, to, to pray for this last category and yet very important for this mission, mission week. If you know you have gotten yourself in a covenant other than the covenant of the Lord and you know that you want to come out you want to if you don't want stay in there stay in there but if you want to overcome you got yourself into sexual immorality you got yourself into drunkenness you got yourself into something that you know very well whatever it is only get ashamed if you want to die this is what the scripture says, if you get ashamed of me, I will get ashamed of you in, my pre in the presence of my father. And don't listen to the lies of the devil. You will overcome and you enjoy blah, blah, blah. You want to overcome some covenant. I have an, to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I was instructed to pray for you. You come here. Come and we pray. If there is any covenant that you found yourself into. Whether brought to you by your mother, you realize that what your mother began is following you by your father, by your friends. Someone lured you into something and you think it is arresting you. You're getting addicted to something. You have an opportunity. Come and we pray. Come and we pray. This is mission week where we want to partake of the covenant of God. We want to silence any kind of covenant. Do not allow fear to overshadow you. Let me say something. Fear is the glory of Satan. Satan keeps people in his blossom by putting fear on them. overcome these things our God is faithful I overcame hallelujah you are the victory hallelujah I overcame sing it I overcame hallelujah Come out, don't hesitate. 
You won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I overcame. I overcame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won the victory, King of Glory. Come on, Jesus is able to vindicate you. Don't allow the devil to take you deeper in that thing. Don't allow Satan to convince you to go deeper with that thing. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above that thing. I overcame. I overcame. Hallelujah. You won the victory for me. You said it's finished and no my story is written my story is written and no I am the Lift up those hands. I want to give one minute to some lady. I just want to give you one minute. Just come out. God has put this day for you. That he wants to deliver you from the bondage of that thing. He is able. Let me tell you something. God is able to give you that victory. Lift up those hands and just allow the Lord to take over. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh on me. Let your living water, let your living water over my soul. Come out, come out. Just come out. God wants to deliver you of every situation. Every situation that has troubled my mind. Come out. Don't fear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let your living water flow over my, my soul. Ma, 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 ma. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control, control of every situation. Every situation that has troubled my mind. Trouble, my, 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 my. And I'm not unto you. Call upon the name Jesus. Jesus calling. You are the healer. You are the redeemer that we desire. Hey, hey. Call the Father. Call upon the spirit of the living God. Holy, holy, you are the holy, holy. Everybody, call the spirit of the living God. Spirit, Lord, we need you more than yesterday. yourself. Begin to pray for yourself where you are. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin telling the Father who is beyond your problem to take it away. Begin to pray for yourself. Don't mind about the people who have not come. 
It is you that the Lord is looking for this afternoon. It is you that the Lord wants to deliver from any kind of covenant that you put yourself into. Our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. He can put a stop on that thing. He can restore your joy. He can restore your salvation. He can restore your, your, your victory, your excellency. Some of you, Satan was taking away your excellency. Oh, son, it is. Take over Jehovah and second home. We believe in your intervention, oh Lord. We believe in your redemption, King of glory. We believe in your vindication. For it is you that died on the cross that we may have life and life in its fullness. Take over every heart, King of glory. Take over every life, Jehovah Shammah. Heal us from every kind of covenant that is taking us away from you. We break every work of darkness in the name of Jesus and by the power of his cross and his blood. We bind up the powers of any evil spirits and command them to lose their grip on us. We bind up the powers of the earth, air, fire, water, the netherworld and satanic forces of nature. We break any curse. We break any hex. We break any spell sent against any of you. And we pray for a vindication. We pray for a visitation. May the Lord visit you. May the Lord visit you. May the Lord visit you. I pray for a visitation. That you will no longer walk under the jumper of that thing. That you will no longer walk under the power of that covenant. But you walk in the new covenant of the man Jesus Christ. Who died once and for all. Who gave his life for you. That you may be vindicated. Come on, lift up your hands. You came from heaven, say. You came from heaven to earth to show me the way from the earth to the cross. All my days were paid from the cross to the grave and from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, I am led to do something. Praise the Lord. I am led to anoint all of you. Praise the Lord. And I know God is up to something upon your lives. And I will do that and I will shut up. Let us continue in prayer. Father, we thank you for your covenant is the ultimate one. Your covenant is what we desire. We are sorry and ashamed. Take a moment in repentance. We are sorry and ashamed that our lives were taking that direction. We feel so bad, but we lived that kind of thing. Take a moment and just tell him, Lord, have mercy on me. Just tell him, vindicate me. The Bible says that even though your sin is as red as scarlet, if you turn, he will make us as white as snow. And he says, if my people who are called by my name, you people are called by the name of God. You are called by the name of God. That is who you are. And that is what the devil wants to take away from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. chosen to follow him faithfully. May the Lord continue to break every chain. May the Lord continue to deliver you. May the Lord continue to write his law in your heart. Thank you so much, our Chief Missioner, Reverend Simon Peter Dembiriari Jesu. Shall we appreciate him again? And shall we appreciate Reverend Canon Edson Abasa for the work well done. 
allow me bring to our attention the following in 30 minutes time we will have a staff workshop staff please do not miss we shall be in the chapel of the good shepherd and if you've tested this please send a text to some of the staff who are in the old covenant to come and receive the new covenant and thereafter, we shall have a plenary session in the evening at exactly 7 with Mrs. Penina Biargaba in these grounds. Please do not miss. And on Saturday, we'll begin our day with morning devotion by Mr. Sam Oplot. Please do not miss. We'll have a plenary session by Mrs. Penina Biargaba and our workshops by Mrs. Penny Nabiarugawa and Mr. Sam Oplot. We'll have the leadership workshop by Mr. Sam and Mrs. Penina. And we shall crown tomorrow with healing and deliverance. So please inform those that have been held in campaigns that there is still grace, that even when they are lost somewhere, they can still receive salvation and we shall crown mission on Sunday with Bible exposition and a plenary session by a chief mission and may God bless you, may God provide for you, shall we all arise and receive the blessing Father into your hands we place our lives because we have received an assurance that without you we are nothing. Lord, we pray that this new covenant shall not be a ritual, but it will be in our hearts that we will be able to free the coming generation. We shall free the fourth generation from us. The Father Bishop Stuart University will be Free. The Father, the students in this university will be free. That the staff shall be free. Father, that is our desire. That we will not only have mission as a ritual for this institution. But Lord, you will deliver us. You will save us from covenants that were made even long before we came. Father, we pray that you teach us your ways. We pray that you provide for us. Lord, we pray that we will not be beggars and out of begging to make covenants that are not ours. Lord, we pray that you will provide for us. We pray, oh God, that you will continue to visit us in our quiet times, that your light will shine brighter. The Lord, we will know you we will follow you without wavering. And may the peace of God that is greater than we can understand keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, beloved of God. May that blessing protect you. May that blessing be upon our facilitators. May that blessing be upon our families. May that blessing be upon Bishop Stewart University. This nation, Uganda, the world, your church, O oh Lord, now and forevermore. God bless you. We wish you the best. Hope to see you at 7 p.m. and staff, we are meeting immediately after 30 minutes. Choir.